There is no doubt anymore, Black Magic's Da Vinci Resolve is becoming a leading voice in the post-production community. The main attraction is the one-stop suite that offers everything you need, from ingestion to delivery, coupled with a state-of-the-art coloring toolset. The fact that in this day and age we have access to previously unimaginable tools is simply incredible. Plus, you practically have about 95% of what you need to edit and color grade in the free version. Today we'll talk about 10 of my favorite and useful OFX within the color page of Resolve. Some are available in the free version, others in the studio. I won't be going in depth, but instead I'll just demo them so you can get some ideas on how to use them in your workflow. And if you stick to the end, I have a bonus tool that's extremely simple and efficient to implement. Let's get rolling. Chromatic Adaptation this tool is built to adapt colors to various lighting conditions and involves a bit more than just a simple temperature and tint change. You can, for instance, approximate the look of a scene that was captured under a certain type of lighting into a different selectable target source. Or perhaps fine-tune the color temperature of a clip that wasn't set correctly in camera. Set the source illuminant to the original color temperature of the source footage and select a different one from the target illuminant. The advantage of this tool over a regular color temperature adjustment is that it takes in account the working color space and gamma, which can be specified from the selection boxes below. When you need to homogenize a range of hues towards a single target color, the color compressor can do wonders. It works extremely well for skin tones where you might want to correct certain patches of discoloration or for items in the scene where you want to limit the color range of a certain product. Use the color picker to select a range or single sample from the color you want to work with from the target color. Then, using the compressed hue, saturation or luminance, you can compress the color range towards the target selection. This tool works well using a qualifier preserving other parts in the image you don't want to be adjusted. The Texture Pop OFX is a glorified version of the mid-tone detail slider in the color wheel palette, but with the option of applying the adjustment to certain tonal ranges. Use it to add a splash of sharpness for footage that's slightly out of focus or use it to soften skin tone. Use it responsibly since it can get out of control quickly if you do drastic adjustments resulting in unnatural looks. A little bit goes a long way. Halation is known technically as a flaw in analog film processing, but it developed into being a pleasant characteristic of the film look. It's defined by the orange tinted bloom around the high contrast area such as lights or reflections. Use it in conjunction with a film print emulation lot such as the K2383 to add to the filmic character of your image. If you're submitting footage to Stocksy, you should use this selectively since your aim in this case should be for a natural look. A handy OFX plugin that solves a variety of flickering issues from time-lapse exposure variations to fluorescent light frequency pulsing. It also has more advanced parameters that you can use to target the flicker adjustments only to the affected area of the image. A highly customizable yet easy to use effect to add glow to your image. Use it to emulate analog film bloom around the highlights or to add a mist effect, reducing the contrast around those areas. Works great to soften the highlights roll off in the high contrast area such as light sources. If used in a soft light composite type mode, you can create some pretty moody looks. The face refinement OFX itself is worth the entire Resolve Studio value. It is extremely powerful and very easy to use with incredibly natural results. It features face detection, analyzing and tracking the movement, then dividing the face into regions that can furthermore be manipulated for retouching. When you want to add some movement to static footage that was filmed on a tripod, the camera shake OFX is the best candidate. This effect mimics random handheld camera movement extremely well with the luxury of fine-tuning certain parameters such as shake levels and quality ranging from soft to irregular jolts and yanks. There are those times when you want to fill the black frame spaces of a vertical video in a horizontal timeline. The blanking fill tool can do that together with loads of other adjustments like the fill extent and appearance and even adding a drop shadow to the source. This trick works well if you want to add user-generated content to your news segments or documentaries, making the vertical clip fit seamlessly into the edit. And of course the last, but not by all means the least, film grade. This plugin can induce instant charm by adding an incredibly realistic and natural film grain over your image. 
You have several presets at your disposal that need little to no adjustments at all, as well as more advanced parameters to adjust and fine-tune the grain to a certain film stock character. Film grain can also be effective to fix banding issues found in 8-bit footage. Use it sparingly for Stocksy. And before we end, here is a bonus tool I absolutely love. But before that, please remember to hit that like button. Light Rays is an OFX used to bring volumetric lighting from the light sources in your scene. It is widely known as God Rays from above. It's simply adding a directional glow effect to the highlights which you can adjust further to fine tune the angle, strength and length. It can enhance a scene but also can result in unrealistic looks if overused. If you are submitting footage to Stocksy, avoid this effect. Your primary goal, again, should be a natural look. DaVinci Resolve has a bunch more tools like these we've touched on that will no doubt be part of your workflow. I recommend experimenting with each of them individually and discovering which one will fit your workflow. Remember that each tool or adjustment should make your image look better. Adding an effect just for the sake of the effect is counterproductive. These adjustments and effects should blend seamlessly into our images in a natural way. If they are noticeable, we'd rather be off not using them at all. And if you're a Stocksy contributor, you should pay even closer attention if using any of these tools as your ultimate target is a natural look that clients can further adapt in their projects. So if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy the Problem Clips episode where we show how these tools can fix problematic clips. So if you click on the link, you can go and watch that right now. Do you have any favorite tools in Resolve you absolutely love using? Leave a comment below. And before you leave, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not yet, and click that notification bell so you know when we're posting new content on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.